Okay, I'll start off, first of all, by saying I'm a member of the Wiltshire Archaeology Field Group. So I volunteer weekends and I go out and we do various projects. Um, this is a picture of me and my children at Dig Devices. That was a project we carried out a couple of years ago as part of the CBA Archaeology Festival of Archaeology. Um, as part of the field group we undertake lots of different types of excavation, geophysics surveys, building surveys, recording graffiti, recording arbor glyphs, um, field walking, metal detecting, and we all have a lot of fun. And that, I think that's an important thing we talked about this morning. So it's part of the sort of the communal and the social values that came out of a couple of reports a couple of years ago by the HLF and by Historic uh, England's Heritage Counts. Um, we have local impact and engagement. Uh, we sometimes make it into the newspaper, which is great. Sometimes on local radio, sometimes in newsletters. These are all the outputs of the research that we do. But we also like thinking about the research in terms of the bigger picture, in terms of contributing. The last slide was a project of the First World War POW camp. This is contributing to the CBA's Home, uh, legacy, home Front Legacy Project. Um, we use Oasis. Uh, is Louisa here? Yeah, hi Louisa. We don't really like Oasis. It's not brilliant for what we do. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, we do it and we understand that you know it's, it's for the, the commercial practices, but we do it. This is a way of getting our research out into the public. Um, we can talk about that in terms of developing Oasis later. Oh, I'm also the Research Resources Officer at Historic England, and this is my day job, and this is what I'm responsible. As Gareth said, I'm the capacity building team of the research group. And so what I wanted to do is talk about what I do. I develop, as I said, research frameworks, uh, or I help to improve and to develop the future models of research frameworks. These are the ones from the sort of the chronological ones, the thematic ones, or the mar national maritime, the Mesolithic research framework, and also you've got the whole range of the, re uh, the regional research frameworks. And as part of my work, we were looking at, you know, this is part of my work in developing it is looking at audiences. And then the thing is, so why am I here now talking about community generated research? Because that is what the project that we'll talk about in a second, why we commissioned it, why? Um, and I think part of it is looking at well, I'll look at this very, in fact, I'll talk about why we've done it now. But one of the things was that research frameworks, one of the most, the big successes and one of the main objectives when they say sort of the regional ones came out in the mid 90s was bringing together the community. And that was much more in terms of this, the academic sector, the commercial sector and the local authority sector. Um, Community groups have been involved, they have been engaged, they have been in some of the regional ones, they can take part in workshops and their research has also contributes to it. But in terms of actually valuing it like the academic and like the commercial uh, research, it's not as valued as highly. Um, as part of this was the review of research frameworks that we undertook a, a year ago and the consultancy Pi Tate did. And one of the recommendations that came out of that was broadening the remit, looking at trying to engage the society and local communities in terms of their local knowledge. Um, the other thing, the, by, looking at, uh, by um, looking at this project, Value of Community Heritage, it's, it contributes to the highest pro, uh, strategy, the Heritage Information Strategy, and this is what I alluded to earlier with Louisa's, in terms of part of that is the redevelopment of Oasis, the Herald Project, and looking at how that can be improved for community groups as a way of, of actually making community heritage research accessible uh, more publicly. Uh, it also contributes to the New Heritage 2020. I've highlighted a couple of things here. One is that the fact of looking at taking uh, community groups taking more responsibility for their research, sharing their knowledge. And the other one is, uh, I quite like this one, is the uh, acknowledgement that experts do not have a, a monopoly on understanding. And looking at having, broadening out to different perspectives and values, which engaging with community groups and involved in the process has. There's also this, uh, the recent focus on uh, commercial archaeology, commercial works, PP216, 20 years of that, uh, these really large scale grey lit projects like the Roman Rural Project that uh, Fulton and uh, Neil Holbrook's been doing, Richard Bradley's work, really highlighting the contribution that commercial work actually makes 
to the sort of the knowledge and the research values of that. But what about the contribution of community research? So we've highlighted all those other ones. So what about it? You know, do we actually know how much research is being is out there? Um, do we know where that research is? Where where is the products of the research? Where is where is the where is it being disseminated? What's happening to it? Um, we're also then looking at it in terms of the the planning system. In terms of you know, is it contributing to HERs? Is all this work actually doing that? Is it contributing to research frameworks? Um, and the last one is it's looking at the idea of you know, are they actually involved? not just in the process of turning up to a workshop at a research framework, but actually is their research being valued as part of creating a research agenda. So this is where I'm going to sort of more or less finish off, um, is that this is what we commissioned uh, in March this year, this project, Assessing the Value. The project is undertaken by Worcestershire Archive and Archaeology Service, and um, Rob Hedge is over there somewhere, and Eileen Nash, we have a wave. They're both the project, uh, they're leading on this project. It is, first, an important thing I should say before we look at the stages, it's not just about archaeological uh, research. If you broaden it out to also look at the value or try to look at evaluating local history societies, we've done this in partnership with the British Association for Local History, maritime groups, and also building recording groups. I think the building recording groups has actually slipped off the slide. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> Not deliberate. <laughs> um, and the project, two-stage project. First project has been a national online survey uh, that closed in September. Uh, Rob's now cr crunching all the data for that. And the second stage is they've got three case studies where they're looking actually at some of the reports. So looking at the reports, are they in the HR? Are they being cited as sources for uh, monument records and event records and also other research that isn't in the HR? And this is where it's an, an interesting part of the project is actually looking at could it uh, have potential value for contributing to HRs and research frameworks. And um, that is the end of my little talk. But basically, the report is out in November of this year. Um, I think they've got a session at next year's CIFA conference in Leicester that all the results will be out of that. And we're really going to be looking from November on, on where we're going to go with all of this. It will be contributing to my work in terms of the research frameworks. But within part of the framework of Heritage 2020, I think there's a lot more potential that this project and the report will be able to come from. And we can lead into different avenues. Okay, thank you.